I interviewed 20 plus engineers. Here's why most can't code. Ooh, ouch, ouch. I haven't even read the article, but I feel like I'm gonna feel some pain right here. Uh, it's an article written by the Latency Gambler on medium.com. And I'm interested in reading this because this person has interviewed 20 plus engineers, obviously. You know, this person is an interviewer, so quite a high up position with uh, quite a few years of experience, I imagine. And why most can code? Big, big statement. Let's 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 see. Let's see. Over the past year, as a senior software engineer at a B two B SaaS company, I've conducted twenty plus technical interviews for roles ranging from intern to SDE two. My journey from Fintech intern to OTA SDE1 to my current role gave me perspective on what real coding looks like. What I discovered during this interview was alarming. So request arrives, check count in Windows, update count in Windows. Okay. Only three out of 23 candidates could solve a basic problem without hints. Here's what went wrong and why the industry has a serious problem. The standard interview setup. I typically use a simple 45 minute format, 10 minutes background discussion, 30 minutes live coding problems, five minutes question from candidates. My go-to problems aren't lead code hard. They're practical scenarios we face daily. Problem one, design a rate limiter that allows 100 requests per user per hour. Problem two, implement a cache with TTL that can handle 10K ops per second. These aren't algorithmic puzzles. They are real world engineering problems that require basic problem solving skills. And I feel like a lot of people that prepare for interviews, they study for interviews, they prepare questions like this, right? Pattern one, the painful pattern I observed. Pattern one, the algorithm memorizers can date. Is this a sliding window problem or should I use a two pointer approach? Me, it's about rate limiting. How would you track requests? Candidate, um, can I use a hash map and sort it? Here's what they typically attempted. So they have a no persistent, this was a real submission, no persistent logic, request append, user ID timestamp, why sorting? Okay, so yeah, they append the user ID and timestamp, they sort and count requests in last hour, you count and then you count timestamp, yeah. Okay, ignore user ID completely. Return, return count, if return count if it's less than 100. So design a rate limiter that allows 100 requests per user per hour. Okay, so it's, uh, yeah, you return a Boolean then. Problem, no understanding of data persistence, sorting for no logical reason, missing the core concept of per user limiting. Uh, all n log and complexity for simple counting problem. Pattern two, the AI dependent generation. Most candidates asked questions that revealed he heavy AI assistance. Should I import the collections module for a basic hash map? Do I need to handle edge cases without understanding what edge case exists? Is there a built-in function for this, for basic arithmetic? One candidate literally asked, can you give me the function signature? I usually like GitHub Copilot generated. Pattern three, the framework warriors. Me implement a simple LRU cache. Candidate, should I use Redis or maybe implement it with ExpressJS middleware? He's a typical attempt. I really hope we get an answer to these questions at the end. I know that's not the point of these, this article, but just as an interest. Actual submission from SD E2 candidate. So you have a class LRU cache, you have a constructor, constructor where you have a cache variable that is no, cache, what do you call those? Cache variable that is a map, capacity is a capacity, uh, that is an input, get key, forgot to update access order, return this cache, get key, put cache, get key. Issues, missing core LRU behavior, no capacity management, doesn't understand the data structure requirements. What good candidates did differently? The three successful candidates shared common traits. They asked clarifying questions. Good candidate asked, what happens when we hit the rate limit? Should we return an error or queue that Q 
queue the request? That's a really good question. Average candidate. Should I use an array or a list? They thought before coding. <clears throat> Good candidates spend five to seven minutes discussing approach. I need to track requests per user. A hash map with user ID as key makes sense. For each user, I will maintain a sliding window of timestamps. I can use a DQ to efficiently remove old timestamps. They implemented incrementally. Here's how a strong SDE1 solved the rate limiter. So you have a uh, class with the depth, with the uh, variables of limit windows user requests as it was described up there and you have definition is allowed and then you test it why this works clean separation of concerns efficient or one amortized operations handles edge cases naturally actually solves the problem the root causing an cause analysis after reflecting on these interviews i identified three systemic st systematic issues issue one memorization over understanding current approach to some uses hash map so all problems need hash maps better approach i need fast lookups so let me consider data structures issue two tool dependency many candidates couldn't write basic loops without ide autocomplete when i asked someone to implement binary search they said i usually just use bisect bisect left Issue three, no mental models. Good engineers build mental models. So you have request arrives, check count in Windows, update count in Windows, or decision allow block, and decision allow block. Bad candidates jump straight to code without understanding the flow. What this matters for in what this means for the industry, the performance gap. I ran a simple benchmark comparing problem solving approaches. Memorization approach, time to recognize pattern, two to three minutes, time to code solution, 15 to 20 minutes, success rate, 15%, code quality, poor. First principle approach, time to understand problem, five to seven minutes, time to code solution for eight to 12 minutes, success rate, 85%, code quality, production ready. So first principle approach is the better approach and that makes sense. Memorization approach is just like, okay, you see this problem, apply this but as soon as there's a problem that is not in that format i feel like you would struggle you will struggle with that i think this article also gives hope because we hear all the time like there is um an, a position open and there's like thousands of candidates applying for it but yeah like this like this um like this article suggests, most people can't really code. And I feel like getting to this level of answering these questions pretty well, it's not undoable. I think it's something we can do and we just need to spend time on it. The AI paradox. AI tools should enhance thinking, not replace it. The best candidate I interviewed used AI like a senior, uses Stack Overflow for syntax and optimization, not for problem solving. AI dependent code, actual submission, function cache, fun return new proxy target generated by copilot candidate didn't understand complex proxy logic human thought code it's a lot simpler and a lot cleaner the fix and it's also it's a lot easier to read the fix back to fundamentals based on my four years in the industry here's what actually matters one understand the problem domain before writing code two think in systems not just algorithms three use ai tools not a Use AI as a tool, not a crutch. Four, practice building, not just solving puzzles. The engineers succeeding in real projects aren't the ones who memorized 300 lead code problems. They are the ones who can think through problems, design simple solutions, and iterate based on requirements. We need to fix how we hire, and more importantly, how we learn. The industry depends on it. I really like the questions that he or she asked in this article. And... Yeah, I feel like those things are the ones that you can expect a senior engineers to be able to do. Yeah, I I mean, every time I read this, I just realize that I have a lot to learn, a lot of studying to do. And in a way, I'm happy. Yeah, I think this field, this domain is kind of like easy to enter, hard to master, which is what I love about well, when I work on things. But yeah. Hope you enjoyed this article. See you in the next one. Bye.